I'm thrilled to bits to be in Northern Ireland Brunelling because this is Dundrum Bay. Every author who writes about the grounding of the SS Great Britain mentions Dundrum Bay. But no author has pinpointed the exact position of where Brunel's SS Great Britain ran aground in September 1846. The captain, uh, Captain Hoskin, left Liverpool on an iron ship with a propeller, the SS Great Britain, with a compass. And not so much was known about accuracy of compasses in iron ships in those days. But anyway, Captain Hoskin thought he was rounding the southeast corner of the Isle of Man. But he wasn't. He was around Dundrum Bay. And the ship ran aground. And Brunel was utterly livid because the company, the S S Great Britain Great Western, didn't show much urgency when the ship was being tossed around like a saucepan, as Brunel said. And I was so lucky that to make this video I got the help of Phil, who lives in the Coast Guard cottage, which is located behind the camera, which will include in the video, and it's where some of the passengers were accommodated. We're going to meet Phil and he's going to point roughly, roughly, or I should say nearly exactly, where the ship actually was beached. It hit the sand and then it was pushed further up the beach to lessen the impact of the storms by having the ship right up on the beach as far as possible. So let's meet Phil. Great to meet you, Phil. And you, Michael. Can you please point out to the audience exactly between here and the Moor Mountains in Dundrum Bay where the ship ran aground in a nice firm voice? Well, we believe we believe that the the ship ran aground just here on, on the shoreline now, just as we can see the tide going out. On the left we have a uh, seal rock, the one with the, a V, a V shape cut in it. And on the right we have bird rock. Um, and we have another rock formation just, just in front here and we believe that the ship ran aground from the surveys that have been done, the ship ran aground um, in that what we call the second bay. So just between this initial rock formation here and bird rock on the other side. Just just about where the, the tide line is there now. So can you show us what you've got in your hand and well, uh, tell I us may, stories? I may may well have some of the, the coal that would have been used to power Brunel's ship back in the day. Um, I have some sea coal here. This was gathered just along the shore five minutes ago by uh, the high tide last weekend, the spring tide, which, which would have been used to refloat the, the ship. Um, and this, we often see this, this, these elements of coal been washed up um, on the shore after, after a stormy sea. So you're saying that the ship ran aground and was pushed up the beach and lodged between that V-shaped rock and the rock second out from the camera where you've got water in front of it. Yes. Good. So but in, in this line here, looking directly up to you can see Donard in the background there, looking straight up to sleeve Donard. And some of the images show it running up the beach, but we believe from the surveys that have been done it was actually lying aground across the beach. Between yes, these, between these rock formations. because the Victorian newspapers have a picture of it being stern to bow facing us, so it was yeah. parallel to the waves. And Brunel actually ordered a barrier of planks chained together to act as a shield against the winter storms. And the only damage that had occurred was when the rudder was broken. But because the ship was iron, there was no damage. It missed these rocks. And if that would have been a wooden ship, it would have eventually broken up. That's correct. That's correct. But I'm very lucky to be here with Phil because the tide is almost at its lowest point. So I wanted to see the area of the grounding at low water and in the month of October 
if low water was about six at night, seven at night, seven in the morning, it'd be dark. So I'm very lucky that the pinnacle of light has allowed us to see the bay at low water. Just before we finish, Phil's gonna stand in front of his house and he's gonna tell us the unusual story of this Coast Guard cottage. So if you can come a little bit closer to the camera, yes, keep please. coming in a little bit, that's it, we've got you. So the history of this house, we believe, was built um, in 1822, uh, not, not as a dwelling house at all, but to be a lookout post for customs and excise. Um, the government at that time was, was find that there was a lot of smuggling of alcohol and tobacco up onto the beach here at, uh, at Dundrum and this building was designed as a lookout tower so you can see the upstairs bedrooms um, as they are now, the dwelling house, but back, back in the day it was designed to be uh, a lookout tower so all the upstairs rooms have very good uh, views all across the beach to the mountain, out into the bay itself, and to the Torella, the public beach, the, the other direction. Yeah, because we're on private property, so I'm very lucky that Phil's allowed me to be here. The story is from the SS Great Britain Institute in Bristol and the Bristol University. In 2005, they came here with magnetometers and scanned the whole beach, Torella Beach, to the east, and this private beach where the ship ran aground, and they found magnetic readings in the shape of a ship, a donut shape, where the ship ran aground to prove it actually ran aground where Phillips told us. And some of the passengers were accommodated in the Coast Guard cottage. And Phil has just told me that the houses to the left accommodated some of the passengers as well. Can you tell us a little bit of information about those houses well, it, originally, with, with the Coast Guard station as it was set up, the watch house, as we call it, the big building here on the right, the, the lookout, was never designed as a dwelling house. It was, it was offices on the down, downstairs and lookout upstairs. And then the cottages to our left here uh, were all accommodation for the, the, the staff members of the Coast Guard station. Um, and we believe the, the head of the Coast Guard had the number one cottage here, as we call it, the one with the blue, the blue door, and the rest of the team stayed uh, with their families in the rest of the cottages, seven cottages in total. Okay, so I'm going to thank Phil, I'm going to pan the camera to show you the ambience. We've got the staff houses, the Coast Guard cottage, Belfast, is north of here in the distance there and I don't know if Bruno arrived from there to come here but when he was here he was absolutely devastated that his ship had just been left here at the mercy of the waves since September and he was here in December 1846 complaining that the directors had not been hasty enough in trying to protect the ship and he ordered how the ship was to be protected he said it was the finest ship in the world and it deserved to be cared for rather than semi-abandoned. The Great Western Shipping Company lost so much money that the ship was sold to a company in Liverpool. And this is the first public video ever made of the grounding of the SS Great Britain, Dundrum Bay, Northern Ireland. So thanks Phil very much for your help.